have photos that you want to put on a scrapbook layout, do you ever have a trouble of having too much background or distracting elements and you just want to narrow down to just the critical elements? Well, I'm going to tell you about cropping using Photoshop Elements 2018 next. Howdy, I'm Devin Noel Lee and this is Family History Fanatics and I'm going to help you capture and preserve your memories using scrapbooking on Photoshop Elements 2018. So we take images all the time or we have images from the past that have extra detail that is kind of distracting. We don't like it. So I'm going to throw you three ways and how you can use Photoshop Elements to crop your images for your layout. But before we do that, we're going to stop and take a quick word from our sponsor. Our sponsor today is Family Roots Conference. It's going to be held in St. George, Utah on September 28th and 29th, and we'll have over 80 classes as well as some well-known keynote speakers. And the Family History Fanatics can't wait to see you there. So check out all the details that you need to, in order to participate in this conference. And you know what's really great? For those of you that have young family members or me, Maybe you're hanging out with some of your grandchildren and great-grandchildren. You can bring the kids. There's plenty of free activities for children to get involved, such as panning for, for treasure and um, Indian dances and more. So go ahead and check out that website, Family Roots Conference, and we can't wait to see you there. As I promised, there are three ways that um, you can use to crop your images. I'm going to start with my favorite first and then I can show you two others and you pick the one that works best for you. Now the first one involves a shape where you're going to snap an image to a shape. This is something where you can create your own shape or if you're using a template, this is what you're going to do with those templates. You're going to click on this shape and snap your image into that shape and then resize your image. Make sense? No? Let me show you how and it'll make a whole lot more sense. So down here, I'm going to create a shape. I'm going to use the rectangle tool. Now the rectangle tool might look like kind of an amoeba shape or a rounded rectangle or um, a star, a polygon, or an ellipse. For now, I'm just going to focus on creating a rectangle, but you could use any of these shapes and snap your photos into them and thereby cropping them. So I'm gonna draw a quick box. And there you go. Now, if your box happens to be white on white, one of the things you can do is come down here to the color changer and pick a different color because the color of the box doesn't matter. We're throwing a picture into that box and that's what's most important. So now we need to go back to the selection tool because that's the only way we're gonna go back to the photo bin and take a pic peek at the photos that we wanna bring into this layout. So I have this rectangle, I think I'm gonna move it over here for right now. And I want this image to go into that box, but I want to crop it. So first I'm going to drag the photo to my work surface, but the photo is below this shape. I need it to be above for this cropping technique to work. So I'm just gonna move it up. If you don't know how to do that, I talked about that in a previous video. Check out the info cards or the description below and you'll be able to see how to do that and get caught up. So now that my image is above the shape that I wanna snap it to, I need to use keyboard shortcuts. Control, Alt, G. And now the image is, is snapped to that shape. But I don't want its elbow, that's not exciting. I just use the principles of resizing the image until it fits the shape. Now, I still don't like the crop. Instead of continuing to resize the image, I'm going to play around with the shape. But to do that, I have to make sure I click on this shape layer and click its bounding box. And then I can change the cropping that is taking place. I can add or I can subtract and click the green check mark and you're good to go. So that's the first way, snapping to a shape, any shape, but snapping to a shape. 
Way number two is cropping before I bring it over into my work surface. I'm going to come down to the photo bin once again. I have my um, select tool selected. If I'm over here on the rectangle, I can still get to the photo bin, but I need to make sure I get to the selection tool. So I always like to click select the selection tool first. <laughs> That's a tongue twister. And come on down to the photo bin. So I'm in the photo bin, and let's say I want to use this image. And I'm going to come down to the crop tool. And notice it already throws these really cool grid lines. Um, if you want to learn the principles of thirds, this kind of helps you about placing your most important thing um, at the corners when these lines intersect. I just want to get rid of some of this extra straw. It's okay if you crop into somebody's head a little bit or their back a little. You just don't want to make it too awkward, but cropping in actually is a very talented technique. Click my green OK button click on the photo bin, click on my work surface, then drag the image onto my work surface. Up, oh, I'm trying to crop this again. What do I need to do? Go back up to the selection tool and then I can move the images around. Before we go on with cropping, I need to tell you something. Um, if I move this image because I'm trying to move it around, look, it goes away from the space that it was in. So if I wanna make sure that I can move the image and the shape that it was snapped to at the same time, I need to link those two photos together. So all I do is come up here to one of the layers that is affected by this, hold down my shift key and click on the other layer, and then I click the linking box. And now I can move the shape and the image together. Not bad. You got a little more than you bargained for when we talked about cropping. The Family Roots Conference, once again, is going to be September 28th and 29th in St. George, Utah. Be sure to check out the links in the description so you can um, register. Registration start with passes for $29, which is a steal of a deal. I can't wait to see you and talk to you about your families and how to capture and preserve your memories in St. George, Utah. Way number three is cropping um, while you're on the surface. Let me move these two images once again out of the way. So I'm gonna put an image right there. So which one can be cropped easily? Let's go ahead and use this um, tug of war one. It was taken with my um, phone, so it's not the best camera in the world. But let's say I just wanna get rid of this person up here because I want you to look at the um, kids that are pulling the tug of war rope. So one of the things you can use is you can go to the next button next to the selection tool. It's an elliptical marquee tool or it's the rectangle. So it'll either look like a rectangle or it will look like an oval. All you can have to do on the layer that you're going to edit is draw a box that you want to cut out. And then hit the delete key. It'll say, are you sure you want to do that? Uh, yeah, I think so click OK and press delete again. If you don't like it, you chop too much into your son's head, then just hit the control Z or the little undo buttons down there and you can undo it. Maybe you want to have this be in an oval shape. You could draw the shape tool like I said before or you could use the marquee tool as well. So make sure the oval is selected. Draw the oval over your shape. And now you have two options. The first one is another keyboard trick, Control J. If you hit Control J, then it makes a copy of the image inside the shape that you used. Not bad. It is probably my preferred method of the two, but I'll show you the other one just in case. So I'm gonna undo that. And the um, marching ant in the oval is still there. The marching ants, the little movements from that elliptical tool that we used. The other thing you can do is a little hard to remember, which is why it's not my favorite, but sometimes you need it. Um, I drew this shape, I come up to select, and then I press inverse, and then I do the delete again. So two ways to go ahead and crop um, in that marquee method, which really would make it three and a half ways to crop your image and then I also threw in the bonus of linking your um, shape and cropped image together so you can move it around. Not bad. And now you're ready to start 
creating. So I hope you'll stay tuned to future episodes of How to Use Scrapbook Using Photoshop Elements 2018 here on Family History Fanatics. If you have any questions, be sure to put them in the comments below so I know what to put in a future video.